Hi there, my name is Lauren and I'd like to think that I'm perpetually lost in the right direction. And I'm gonna tell you what that means because it's not a very common phrase. It basically means that I'm pretty sure I'm doing life wrong, um, but because I'm acting intentionally and authentically, things eventually end up working out in their own silly little serendipitous way because <laughs> that's life. So today I thought we could talk about what it means to be a writer. Um, and I, <laughs> I have no authority to back to, to back myself up on this. I haven't published anything major. I don't know anyone in publishing, but at the same time, I don't really think that you really need to be a somebody or to have a really big platform to identify with being a writer. I mean, I think writing is more a verb than a noun. So I'm gonna be covering five uh, unique characteristics that I've pulled out of the depths of my mind um, to share with you today. I tried to be as specific as possible um, as intentional as possible, so I'm hoping that someone out there resonates with this because then I will have done my job. The first one is to embrace your sensitivity and or your observational skills. And the reason that I say this is because you're probably someone who sees a lot, who notices a lot of things, but people maybe don't often give you enough credit for the things that you do see and observe in other people or in places or things. I feel like as a writer you have to be really in tune with not just yourself but with the world around you. You have to know the kind of light to interpret it in in order to strike a particular tone or to hit a particular mood or create a particular effect. I mean it's very, it's pretty detail oriented. Well, it's like knowing how to take this great big idea and translate it very carefully into this finely crafted, delicate little piece of art that may or may not match your original vision. And you don't have to be a writer to know that. It's just, I mean, it's something generally in the creative field, but just thought I'd throw that in here. <laughs> the second one is a big one, and it is that you have an obligation to tell the truth. Um, I've never met a writer who lies, and if they do, they probably shouldn't be a writer, uh, they should probably choose a, another hobby. And the reason that it's important to tell the truth is A, uh, in the words of Mark Twain, who I have on my wall, that's Twainy, he was in my classroom, uh, I found him at a thrift shop. He says that if you tell the truth, you don't have to remember anything, so that's point one. Point two is that that's the point where people are able to connect with you, to really see the kind of person you are, and to maybe maybe deem you as someone who is a favorite author of theirs or a favorite person to empathize with or a favorite literary friend. I consider a lot of the authors that I read friends because they do help with my personal development just like any other friend would. I even consider my journal my friend and if you didn't see my last video I talk about uh, journaling, how to do that for your mental health so you should check it out wherever that box pops up. But really, tell, I mean, telling the truth is really <laughs> scary. Um, I mean, I'm sure there's a point we've all had to face in our childhoods where telling the truth felt like a matter of life or death. And Tara Westover had a really good quote in her book, Educated. I wish I knew the exact page number because I would go over to my book and get it, but I don't really want to waste 15 minutes trying to look for it. But she said that a writer's job is to say, this is how I feel about this, or this is what this means to me. Does it feel this way to you too? I mean, it's kind of like, you know, lightning, lightning doesn't just shoot down. I mean, there's like two signals that kind of like come towards, I'm not a scientist, and then like when they touch, that's like when lightning strikes. And I feel like it's the same thing when you find a favorite author or you find a piece of work that you really resonate with. The third one is that you have to have the courage to take intellectual risks or at least write about difficult topics, especially now in, you know, our current day and age when there's a lot of issues coming to light right now. It doesn't necessarily have to be with current events, but it could be like risks that you take with your imagination, risks that you take with um, concepts for a story that you think of or a blog post or whatever. I mean, it's one thing to follow a trend, like trends can be fun because they're trendy, you know, but I feel like on the other hand, you have to you have to recognize that at a certain point, it's worth putting out something new. Trends can only take a person or an audience so far. It's worth taking a leap, taking a risk, and sometimes nothing happens, Something, sometimes something happens. Or it could just be for yourself. It doesn't even have to be for the masses, for an audience. It could just be for you. The fourth one is to read a lot, and this is something that Stephen King has famously said that you know, if you're going to be a writer, you got to do two things above all else. You got to read a lot and write a lot. Because when you read a lot, it's like expanding your food palette, you know? As much as I love Indian food, that's not all I'm going to eat because I like Thai food and I like classic American diner food and I like Cajun food and I like 
Chinese food and Japanese food. Like I like a lot of different foods. I can't just stick with one and I feel like reading is kind of the same way. Memoir, nonfiction, self-help, business. I've learned recently that I like business topics. Um, I've read a lot of business books on writing. Expose yourself to the thoughts and approaches that a lot of other authors have that may contrast one another. I mean, that's really important. It's, it's really just a matter of getting a really big platter full of different literary pieces of art and creating something based off of, I don't know, what you've gained from them. Number five, I came up with this one myself and I am quite proud of it. Um, and it is that, oh no, I was just getting to the good part. I live right across the street from a hospital, so we hear that a lot. As I was saying, the fifth one, um, the one that I'm most proud of, is that your work is not your baby, you are its surrogate. And I'm gonna explain what I mean by that. A lot of people, when they make something, are really afraid to show it because they've put their heart and soul, probably some tears into it, and uh, they wanna hold on to it, you know? You're creating it for people who need to read it. People who don't know how to say the things that you're trying to say, the things that you've written. You can write a manuscript, for example, or a short story or whatever, throw it into a drawer and keep it safe there. It's like, you know, putting it in a straight jacket and then locking it in a padded cell because you don't want anything bad to happen to it. But it doesn't exactly create room for growth. It is a matter of taking that leap of faith and saying, you know, maybe this will go somewhere, maybe it won't, but I'm making the brave decision for both of us to put it out there because someone might need this more than me. And that is actually the new mindset that I've adopted with books that I don't like. I, it breaks my heart every time I give a book away because I don't enjoy it, I don't like it, or you know, for whatever reason. It's very hard for me to get rid of it. And so I've adopted that mindset that if it's not meant for me, it doesn't mean that it's not meant for anyone. It just means that someone else out, out there might appreciate it more than me. Now, that's not to say that you should always publish a work or that you should, you know, everything you make needs to be seen. Some things are meant to be made simply for pleasure. You know, it's like paint a picture, you know, do a journal entry, make a blog for fun. But I'm more speaking in the case of if you do want to share it, then that is a mindset that probably wouldn't hurt to practice. Okay, now before I wrap up this video, there are two books that I would like to recommend to you as food for thought. If you're interested in writing, if you like writing, if you'd like to increase your writing book shelf. <laughs> the first one uh, is actually the book that really helped me become an avid reader and it is Big Magic by Liz Gilbert. This is more for creating a positive mindset around creating in general. It doesn't just have to be for writing. Any type of creative endeavor, this is a, this is a really great book for I'll put it over here. This is a really good book for setting up the right frame of mind for creating and maybe publishing something. Publishing meaning that it's just put out in a space somewhere that's beyond you. The next one is On Writing by Stephen King. This is pretty much considered like the big one in writing. And this, this is writing specific and it talks a lot about technicalities. Him being in a way, like the father of publishing. He's someone who wouldn't hurt to check out. And his book is really funny too. I mean, it's like, it's really funny. I, I truly enjoyed myself. I've never read a Stephen King novel. I attempted to read one and it was okay. But yeah, I, I encourage both of those. And that's it, that's all I have for you. I hope these little insights were helpful, that you could resonate with them. I really, I really did try to think of some good ones. If you enjoyed this video, be sure to click around on some other videos that I have on my channel. Otherwise, I wish you a really wonderful day because you deserve it. And thank you for taking a chance on someone with not a large audience. <laughs> I'll see you later.